Hello, and welcome to Mobility Now, a show presented by the Houston Galveston Area Council. I'm your host, Alan Clark, HGAC's Director of Transportation. Today's show is focused on an exciting project for the state of Texas, Interstate Highway 69. Let's get started with a short video on I-69. Interstate 69 is a nationwide project to create an economic corridor for North America. It spans the entire country, connecting Canada to Mexico with one continuous freeway. In Texas, I-69 begins at Texarkana, travels through Houston on US-59, and ends at the Mexico border. Improvements utilize existing highways whenever possible, based on recommendations from local advisory committees along the corridor. It's been a tremendous project, it's been 20 years in the making. In the last couple of years, in Texas in particular, I-69 has really come to life. It's a way in which uh, the Port of Houston, for example, what's happening here with the expansion of the Panama Canal. Texas has led the nation in imports and exports for the 10th straight year, largely due to NAFTA. And there's tremendous economic opportunities to create jobs for Texans, to create products to be moved across our state and across our country. It's really come to fruition, and I-69 is really a river of trade. It's the which like the Mississippi would be for economic development purposes, where communities across the state, across the country can benefit from what's happening in transportation as part of that ecosystem. I-69 in Texas will follow US-59 for most of its length to Laredo. South of Victoria, it will split, and US-77 will carry I-69 to Brownsville. A third split from US-59 in Jim Wells County will send I-69 down US-281 to McAllen. Rather than constructing a new interstate, the I-69 project will upgrade existing highways to interstate levels. Proposed improvements may include additional traffic lanes, repair and reconstruction of existing pavements, as well as measures designed to improve safety all without the cost and time required to develop an entirely new freeway. With four ports, the Houston region is a major freight gateway. Future port connectors to I-69 and other freeways will provide a more efficient, direct access to the port and manufacturing centers of the region. Well, I-69 locally is really the ability as things come into the greater Houston area in Galveston and Harris County from the port or from South Texas a way to move those goods in a more efficient manner, getting the road up to interstate standards, removing obstacles such as traffic lights, uh, finding the most direct route, working with the public in a very open, transparent public participation process where this route should go, and then moving those uh, roads in a way where long term for the next 50 to 70 years we have an interstate system that's very vibrant. And it's really the first interstate highway that's been worked on in the past 20 years. The highways to be converted to I-69 are close to the Texas Gulf Coast. During hurricane evacuations, an interstate would have more capacity. Global factors will play a major role in the development of I-69. The expansion of the Panama Canal means more freight traffic for the U.S. and Mexico. The border crossings at Laredo, McAllen, and Brownsville will see a significant increase in truck cargo, making I-69 a vital economic trade corridor. This river of trade that I-69 will be continue to grow that north to south and south to north route, creates economic development growth like nothing we've ever seen before in our state. And the latest transportation bill that happened in Washington, D.C., called MAP 21, will enable us to further expedite roads that are very close to big interstate standards, put a shield on them or a sign that says I-69, and jumpstart those projects and process much faster than we've had done in the past. Interstate 69 is a promising transportation project with a big impact on our region. To learn more, visit the I-69 website from the Texas Department of Transportation. My guest today is Mark Williams, Director of Planning with the Texas Department of Transportation. He oversees short, mid, and long-range transportation plan activities for TxDOT. He is responsible for developing a better integrated multimodal planning process for the state of Texas. Mark, welcome to Mobility Now. Thank you, Alan. Thank you for joining us. Glad to be here. Mark, some people have heard of Interstate 69. I know those who maybe have traveled in some of our northern states, particularly in the state of Michigan, where it goes all the way to the K 
Canadian border, mm -hmm. but uh, many people may be unfamiliar with this idea when it comes to the state of Texas. Tell us a little bit about what is I-69. Well, as you mentioned, Interstate 69 uh, has existed for uh, since the very beginning of the interstate highway system, and, and a segment of it does exist today from uh, Indianapolis all the way up to, to Michigan. Years ago, about two decades ago, there began discussion uh, about extending Interstate 69 southward all the way through southern Indiana and then on to Texas where it would connect to Houston and the Texas-Mexico border to help serve what uh, many had seen as a growing uh, need for improved uh, freight service and uh, transportation highway service along that, uh, that corridor. So uh, it has been a project that has been uh, uh, several decades in, in, in the making but is beginning to, to come to fruition today. Well, will, will Interstate 69 uh, in Texas be developed as a new highway on, on a brand new location? No, what we've been looking at and working with a number of uh, uh, citizens and stakeholders around the, uh, the state is how we begin to develop existing highway facilities to serve as Interstate 69. In Texas, Interstate 69 extends from uh, Texarkana and, and then the border with Louisiana down along US 59 through the greater Houston area and then on to Laredo along US 59 and then it has two spurs that go to South Texas one along US 77 which extends from Victoria down to Brownsville and then another one along 281 which would connect with the uh, area of McAllen. So along this route w the state proposes to improve facilities like US 59 or State Highway 77 to an interstate standard if they're not already constructed at that level? Will there, will there be additional construction where the facility today looks like an interstate? Well, there's, uh, as you mentioned, Alan, there's, there's a number of segments along those routes that are currently built to interstate standards. Uh, by interstate standards, we mean basically what people commonly refer to as a freeway, where right. you do not have traffic signals, you, you have, or, 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 or stop signs, but you have on and off ramps and then overpasses that go over uh, the uh, crossroads. So in many respects, it's a, a safer highway facility. Mm -hmm. It's a highway that uh, uh, is able to handle uh, increased traffic along it. Uh, it's commonly common to what you see along Interstate 10 and Interstate 45 and, and some of our existing freeways here uh, in the greater, greater Houston area. But many sections of uh, US 59, 77, and 281 uh, are, while they're built as four-lane divided highways, they lack some of those same design features, those, those features like uh, the, the, the ramps and the overpasses that you well, see. Mark, hold, hold that idea. We're going to come back and talk some more about how I-69 is going to be designed and how it will improve mobility in Texas. Right now, we're going to take a short break. Get caught buzz driving, and you could do some hard time. Craig, knock it off. Sorry, Mom. It could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. And that could set you back a few years. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. If you drive buzzed, it could cost you around $10,000. You'll face major legal fees, major fines, and steep insurance penalties. You could lose everything. Buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back to Mobility Now. My guest, Mark Williams, and I are discussing Interstate Highway 69. And Mark, we were just talking about the kinds of way, things that distinguish an interstate highway from just any street that you might be driving uh, down. For example, there won't be traffic lights. You'll have ramps to get on and off. 
there'll be a freeway facility, in other words, right. from one end of Texas all the way to our border with Mexico. That's correct. And we were also discussing the types of improvements that might yes. have to be made to some of the existing highways that we talked about to make them Interstate 69. And uh, one of the things that TxDOT and, and the, 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 the local stakeholders and communities that are served by I-69 uh, really see as an important and, and valuable opportunity is that uh, many of these highways, like 77 and 59 and 281, uh, currently are designed with, uh, with, with as four-lane highways that are divided with divided medians mm -hmm. that uh, have many of the, uh, the, ne the, the necessary right-of-way uh, and, and other features that are, that are required, and they lack uh, in some instances to have those overpasses and ramps put in. But most very importantly, uh, there's an ability out there to use the existing right-of-way to really maximize the use of that without having to go out and, and purchase uh, new right-of-way along the nearly 1,200 miles of, of highway that extend across the state of Texas. Mark, didn't the, didn't the, the Texas Transportation Commission desire to see uh, this facility developed as much as possible using an existing facility or, or an existing right-of-way? Well, in, in particular, what the commission did was about, uh, about four years ago, they went out and they established uh, a group of committees that were formed by citizens and other leaders from the communities that are served by Interstate 69. And those were, there was a statewide advisory committee that was established, and then a series of segment committees that were uh, also put forth that, that, that uh, represented many of the regions, each of the regions served by Interstate, or the proposed Interstate 69. And one of the very important recommendations that we heard from those committee members was to do just that, to, to, to use the existing highways like 59 and 77 and 281 to the greatest extent possible and upgrade those highways, staying within the existing right-of-way as much as possible to be Interstate 69. Well, are the improvements that are needed, these, these were identified locally, mm -hmm. and of course, um, I'm sure that TxDOT had to do engineering environmental work if it required a construction activity. Right. Now, now, will these be coming in the distant future? Are some of these happening earlier? Well, yes and no. Uh, in many areas, we have a significant amount of construction that's already taking place today. Uh, there's all, already $650 million worth of highway investment that has been approved and is being built, uh, as we speak, related to Interstate 69. Uh, so those are projects that have been cleared environmentally, and are consistent with many of the priorities that the segment committee members and the advisory committee have established. In other er areas, a lot of that planning work still needs to, to take place. There needs to be environmental studies done. There needs to be right-of-way in some areas purchased where the existing right-of-way is not sufficient to uh, be fully upgraded. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and those projects will, will, will take place over the years to come. I would guess that on a statewide basis, this, though, this is a uh, very major project simply because of its length, if nothing else. Sure. It, 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 it's being 1,200 miles long. It's a project that, in reality, is going to take decades to fully complete. But it took well over 50 years to complete the interstate highway system across the state, uh, across the nation. And mm -hmm. so this is uh, on par with that. Uh, in terms of uh, the amount of work that needs to be done. But there's, there's segments today that are able to be designated as Interstate 69, and there's pieces of highways that we're working on that will soon be open as Interstate 69 in various places around the state. In fact, earlier this year in the Houston area, I believe one of the first two segments uh, was designated as Interstate 69, and TxDOT is um, starting to install signage to show that to the traveling public. You're right. Uh, the section of US 59 from Interstate 610 north to just beyond the Liberty County line, just south of Cleveland, was designated officially uh, this past month as Interstate 69. And uh, that really did not require any change in the highway mm -hmm. uh, as it exists. And, and as you mentioned, it really just involved new signage because that section of US 59 uh, as it exists today is built to interstate standards. There was some, uh, some process that we had to go through to work with the Federal Highway Administration, to work with local officials to get a resolution of support and endorsement of that change, but that was able to be dual designated as both US 59 
and I-69 so that, very importantly, businesses and others who already have uh, uh, addresses along that route have the ability to, to continue to use US-59 or use Interstate 69 if they desire to do that. But it's, it's in the past, it hasn't been easy to get any additional interstate designation on routes. It's, it's uh, highly valued, I know, by the states. Can you tell me uh, just briefly what you think are the key factors that persuaded your counterparts in other states to support an interstate designation for this corridor? Well, first and foremost, there was uh, uh, strong support in Congress and, and the legislation and laws that were passed uh, helped to uh, give us the, the, the designation uh, that we needed to, to make this come about. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, I think there is a recognition nationally of the importance of, of the trade and the traffic activity that already is occurring today along corridors like US 59. Within Texas, just from 2000 to 2010, that corridor saw a population increase of over 23 percent. So the traffic is there, uh, the demand is there, and we expect that to continue into the future. But most importantly is that uh, the planning and, and the people that have been involved with the design and the construction of these highways over the past decades have been building them with the idea that they could one day become Interstate 69. And so they already were able to meet the design requirements necessary to allow us to relatively efficiently work with the Federal Highway Administration and the National Association of State Highway and Transportation Officials, basically all 50 states, who we needed to have their collective support to add these segments to the interstate highway system. And it is a rapidly growing corridor. I know that we've seen in the Houston area a significant increase in population. And with the ports of the state uh, almost lined up along the, the uh, length of, of Interstate 69, I'm sure the growth in trade has been very significant as well. What, what, what's particularly important about Interstate 69 is really how, how many different areas of the state and needs it, it serves. It, it serves not only the, the, the requirement for the growing traffic uh, along it from the population growth, uh, but it also was originally envisioned to serve international trade, trade with Mexico and Canada, but now with the ports, those are very important. Uh, components as well, and Interstate 69 serves those. Well, Mark, we need to stop for a short break, and when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about how Interstate 69 is being driven by Texans. There's no place like home. Getting home safely is just a click away. But making sure your child is in the right seat is just one of the steps down the road to safer travels. I don't know how it works. Find the right seat for your little one's age and size. We saw what you told us. There's no better way to get home safely. Know for sure that your child is in the right seat. Get all the facts at safercar.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Welcome back to Mobility Now. My guest, Mark Williams, Director of Planning at TxDOT and I, are discussing Interstate Highway 69. Mark, we were talking about the way in which the recommendations for this corridor were put together really at a very grassroots level. And, and quite frankly, I think this is um, 
been a unique experience with TxDOT. Tell me a little bit more about what work these segment committees uh, performed and who were on these committees. Well, the segment committees have really been a key part of the planning for Interstate 69 over the past few years. And, and as we talked before, there was a statewide advisory committee that was initially established by the Texas Transportation uh, Commission that included officials uh, along the entire uh, corridor uh, that included representatives from cities and counties and, and ports mm -hmm. uh, that, that comprised that advisory committee. And one of the first things that the advisory committee uh, identified as a need for Interstate 69 was really to uh, establish a set of subcommittees or segment committees, if you will, that could better involve more local level input on the planning and the needs for uh, making future improvements and developing recommendations on priorities. And so it was really kind of a, a mini version of the same types of representatives that you saw on the advisory committee, local officials, re people representing cities and counties, as well as uh, people such as the Texas Farm Bureau and the and trucking associations and interest in ports were all part of the, uh, the segment committees that were formed. And, and the segment committees, uh, my, my remembrance is, is that uh, we had a number of meetings um, where we literally rolled the map out, so to speak, and started talking about where the bottlenecks were, were where um, we had high crash rates, where we had new business development or um, plans for future economic development activities in an area. It, w it was really important to get the members of the segment committees involved r at, at, at really a detail level. So they had a good understanding and appreciation for the type of work that has to go into planning and designing and ultimately building a highway as well as funding uh, a highway. That way they could better appreciate and, and understand the context within which their recommendations needed to fit not only within their local area, but with, within the broader uh, scheme of, of what uh, TxDOT and, and other entities like, like HGAC have to do as they plan future uh, highway facilities and highway construction around the state. Well, I, I know for our area, the, the importance of Interstate 69 is, is um, not just limited to improvements that we need to US 59, but those are important. Mm -hmm. I don't know that I remember that our segment committees identified two areas of a pro that were priorities. One was to complete US 59 to interstate standards through Liberty County, mm -hmm. um, past, past and around the city of uh, Cleveland, and then in Fort Bend County uh, to continue the improvements west from what we call State Highway 99 or the Grand Parkway. Right. Uh, that's a critical, we, we, unfortunately, some of our pieces of 69 are uh, quite congested, and I know that TxDOT's working hard uh, with our local governments to look for solutions in areas where um, maybe building additional lanes on the freeway is not possible, but perhaps improving interchanges and access points could help relieve some of that congestion. Absolutely. Both of those were sections that were identified by the segment committees as priorities. and. And really, you know, once the segment committee came back with their collective rec recommendation to use US 59 as, as Interstate 69 to, to look at dual designation as both US 59 and, and I-69, uh, they begin to focus on, on where those next priorities should be. Mm -hmm. And as you mentioned, the, the section in Liberty County, which would begin at the point where I-69 now ends, just north of the Liberty County line, and would fill in that missing link between that location and, and, and Cleveland uh, was identified as a, as a high priority and TxDOT now is working with uh, uh, the MPO and others to conduct the necessary environmental uh, work that's required to allow us to make that, uh, that improvement. Similarly, on the south side you have uh, the section that currently exists just to the west of, of State Highway 99 and extends to, to Rosenberg that while it's already built to uh, to freeway standards, uh, it is a very congested section of highway and, and the committee members felt like that it was very important to, to add the necessary capacity along that seg segment so that traffic would be able to, to, to flow uh, much smoother than it does today. 
And I-69, I know that uh, in the discussions that we had, a lot of I-69 is related to the economic development of this part of the state. Mm -hmm. We are a port city. We are served by several major national uh, in scope uh, port facilities. And um, this facility will be like Interstate 10 or Interstate 45. It'll be a gateway from our area to other parts of the state, to Mexico, to traffic even going all the way to Canada. Right, very much. And, and a lot of the traffic studies that have been, been conducted uh, over the past number of years uh, related to Interstate 69 really highlights the importance of the greater Houston region. That, that, that I-69, some people may look at it as a national trade corridor, or something that may connect with Canada and Mexico, but the vast majority of traffic uh, really is, is from uh, the, the, the greater Houston area and is generated from uh, the business and the economic and the commercial activity related to this, to this region and the ports and, and, and the, uh, the, 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 the freight activity that occurs here in Houston. You mentioned that uh, the state was identifying priorities, not just long-term investments, but um, shorter-term priorities too. Can you talk a little bit about the scope or size of the kind of investment the state is hoping to make in the I-69 corridor in the, in the, over the next, say, five, 10 years? Well, it's a, it's a significant amount of investment, mm -hmm. and it will take uh, a number of years to uh, be able to put the, the, the funding together needed to, to see uh, these priorities come to, uh, come, come to reality and be constructed. Just uh, in terms of the priorities set by the segment committees, there's about $6 billion worth of, of, of priorities that the members of the segment committees identified, largely looking at uh, building on and adding on to existing segments like US 59 through the Houston area that are currently built to interstate standards and trying to extend that interstate designation to the, to the northeast uh, up into East Texas and then on to the southwest mm -hmm. toward, toward Victoria. Well, I know that this road will serve many important needs in the state of Texas. Uh, one we didn't talk about was the need for hurricane evacuation. It'll certainly help us there as well. That's all we have time for today. I'd like to thank my guest, Mark Williams, Director of Planning for T the Texas Department of Transportation. I'm Alan Clark, HGAC's Director of Transportation. Thanks for watching Mobility Now.